So we go Google Maps, correct the perspective using Sand Ripper, then upscale it in the upscaler, and then bring it into Blender and model from the image. So we're going to just let you try find somewhere real quick here on the map. That's like, we'll just throw it into London somewhere and see if there's anything that's of interest. Okay, we might just do this here straight away, right? So we have this little piece right now. And we can just take a screenshot, capture it all. Control S to save. Okay. And then there's an app called Sand Ripper. This here, Sand Ripper Vercel app. This here is going to let us correct the perspective. So we'll just full screen this, come over to export here or import, sorry, import. We're going to select or import our image that we just picked and we have this and what we can do is just put the corners on the corners right here zoom out for a second and you'll see we're going to correct the perspective over here on this side so we'll just let you grab the other corners and because we've used the top up here we're going to kind of roughly estimate now that we have this here we have this little straight and more straight inversion it used to be like this angle now it's kind of more straight it's still not perfect but it's never going to be because it wasn't taken straight so we'll take this anyway but you'll notice that the quality of this is really terrible as well because we've just cropped this out and zoomed it in essentially so what we can do now is we'll come up to export we'll export as a png we'll save it to wherever you want to save it and then we'll come to the next tool which is going to be up here you search for upscale with a y and an l at the end and there's a, it's an open source tool on GitHub that's free to use. They also have their own website. I would go here, get this. It's a really cool tool. It's completely free and it works on nearly every graphics card. So once we have that downloaded anyway, we can just open up Upscale. For that we can just select our image that we've just exported, open it up. And we can just pick it and we have the cropped, re-corrected perspective version of the image open now. There's a few different options here. You normally you would just want to go general photo if we're doing something like this, but you can experiment with all the other ones. So we'll, we'll try general for ultra sharp this time. And because it's only 1296 by 3228, we can probably double upscale this one to like 12K. And a... So we'll just start with this anyway. We'll hit the upscale button and we we'll want to import the image as a plane. And so if you can't, don't have the option for image as a plane, you have to come up to edit, preferences, add-ons, search, images. And you'll see there's an option here, images as planes. You take that, then you'll have the option to import as a plane. So you just go shift A, image, images as planes, desktop, find the image, the ultra sharp upscale. Now we can just press Z down material preview and we have the pillar in here as a plane. Move it up to the bottom and we can start modeling off this. So first of all, I recommend is coming over to the material settings, come down to the settings down here and changing the blend mode to opaque and the shadow mode to opaque. And so then you won't get a transparent, transparent background there. You're going to have an edge around this, but this doesn't matter. That's just from the export. It's the transparent part of the image that comes whenever you leave Sand Ripper. But that doesn't matter. We can just come into edit mode now. And we can just start adding loop cuts around all the sections where we want to start modeling from. And we're just going to focus on the front face. We're not going to focus on the sides at the minute because we can just project this back once we've made up the face. So we can come in, put two loops here using control R to add each loop. And so now that we have that, we're going to maybe add another one right here at the top where it's going to come in like this and add another one right here. Add another one right here. Add another one right here. And then we can do the same here. We want to add one at the top of this section and same right here. 
and then we're going to double tap the G key if we need to slide them. Because if we move it normally without the thing, it's going to move the entire UV. And we don't want to do that. So you can double tap G and we can slide it up and down along the axis. And it's the same whenever you want to move a vert. So let's say we have this vert here and it needs to come over a little small bit. Well, if we move it normally, it's going to stretch the UV. But if we double tap the G key, we can move it left or right. And then let's say we need to move it diagonally. Well, what we do is we move it left or right first and then double tap the G key again and move it up and down this time. And a, another thing is to be aware of whenever you're doing this is if we come up here to the top right, whenever we're in edit mode and we're moving these around, normally they move the UVs, yeah. So we know we can double tap the G key to slide them. But let's say we want to move them, but we don't want to slide them. Well, we can come up here to the options and just click correct face attributes. And then that's gonna allow us to just move these around the mesh without distorting the UVs. And this is useful if we wanted to, let's say grab this edge and we wanted to move it down to here, but not slide, which we don't. We just wanna keep this edge up here for now. We're just gonna keep going, adding the loop cuts. And then once we have most of the shapes, maybe we want to add another one in here. We want to cut a little face here. We're just going to do three and we're just going to start at the top and we're going to extrude out. We're going to come into edge mode. We're going to press select control select. It's like the shortest path across control B to bevel it in. Maybe we only want one segment because we kind of want this to be sharp. And then we're going to come down to the next section and do the same again. So we're going to come in here, grab these three and maybe extrude them out a little bit. And we kind of have this now, this is probably going to be the corner edge. So we're just going to keep working down here right now. Maybe we'll grab this face, Alt E face along normals, bring it in object. So something like this, maybe select these faces and we'll extrude them out a little bit. And then do another like loop just here, grab the top faces and extrude them out a little bit. So we have this. Maybe we want to come in here and add some loops here. And then this is a perfect example of where we want to, if we don't have correct face attributes on and we're like, we want to move this over, it's going to start stretching it. And we don't want that, so we just come up to options, we go and correct face attributes, and then we're able to slide it over and not bother. And same on this side, we'll just slide it across to wherever we need. We'll grab the face then, and we'll just Alt E extrude it along normals, bring it in. And we can do something like that. And then now, what we want to do is probably get rid of all these other sections so we can select the face, Control select the bottom face. So we have all those edges, X, and just delete the verts. Not the verts, the faces. And the same on the other side. We're just going to do the same. Faces. And now we have this. That's kind of going on. But we can do loads more to this still. So maybe come down here. We'll grab these bottom faces. And we'll just extrude them out. Forward. And we'll grab maybe these ones and we'll extrude them out again. Grab the edge, bevel it. And you can see how we're able to start creating these assets. You know, we can do a lot of things with this. This is only one simple example from one screenshot of Google Maps. It can be used in lots of different ways anyway. And let's say we wanted to just go a little bit further now. We can just maybe we maybe want to just delete these top faces or something and we'll just come on with our own our own like kind of design for the top faces. Come into material preview. And here's another tip. So let's say we wanted it make this entire shape come around the corner. Well, first of all, we might just come in here and we might select these faces and just get rid of the side faces, but we don't need to get rid of that one. 
just get rid of all the faces that are on this side and just X and just type in only faces like this faces. So we just want to, we just clear the faces on the side. Maybe we'll control select cross delete these faces as well. Cause we don't really need them. And we're just going to maybe select this edge. Alt select. Alt select, shift, alt select, right click, bridge, bridge that between the two of them. You unwrap, whatever, boom, that's fine. We want to maybe select these faces here and we might want to just extrude them out a little bit. The same thing. Alt select the edge, control B, maybe we want a little bit of curve on this one. But now that we have that there, it's just about joining up on four sides, so I'm going to do the same here. We're going to delete these faces. We're going to delete these phases. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select this edge so we can snap it to the front view. We can hit up the Z wireframe. You can do also shift alt Z. Alt Z to go full X-ray and then shift Z to go back to solid mode between wireframe. So shift Z wireframe, alt Z x-ray mode, and then shift alt Z for overlays. So you don't even have any overlays. Shift alt Z is one that I use all the time because we don't, we can see. Okay, so my recording cut out whenever I was about to explain how to do the side parts and it just recorded it all only to realize it was all lagged out. So I'm just gonna explain this real quick. And I'm sure you'll probably learn something really quick from it as well. So if we come into solid mode, turn on our overlays, come into edit mode. And let's say we want to extend this around this corner. Well, currently we have this uneven straight line. Like it's, it's like, it's all over the place. So we can come into wireframe, the vertex, select all the verts, and we can start with scaling it on the X axis to zero. And then that'll flatten out these edges. So if we wanted to keep going straight like that, that's what we would do. But let's say we want to bend it now this time. If we rotate it, you'll notice it gets really thin here and gets all distorted. So instead of rotating, we can press space bar and type in shear. And then we can shear it. And we just want to come to the angle we want to extrude it this way. And you'll see down here, the bottom left, it'll either be negative one or positive one, depending on what direction you want to go. So we just want to round it up to exactly negative one. And then that means it's directly ready to go to the next and we can just press E again to extrude it again. And what this allows us to do is whenever we come back into solid mode, it keeps the entire profile the whole way down. So if you made it to this part of the video, congratulations, thank you very much. And uh, if you found anything valuable in this video, I really appreciate if you just drop the like or even a comment, ask me any questions and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Peace.